Hey everybody, Katie Kimball here, and I am with Dr. Brian Hanks, who I met because our three-year-old got a concussion, and I knew that he might need some therapy to actually heal his brain. Uh, Dr. Hanks is a official title? Board-eligible chiropractic neurologist. So chiropractic neurologist, so we're talking about alignment, we're talking about how the brain impacts things, mm -hmm. and you do a lot beyond just concussions. Can I have a quick rundown of like what kinds of things you treat? Simplistically, it would be anything that the brain controls, which is everything. So we see from eye movements, again, the concussions, uh, got people from executives that just want to have increased functionality because they stare at a computer screen all day and so their brain starts to decrease because they're just sitting for eight, ten hours a day. It's just, it brain controls everything, so from posture to muscle control to balance to eye movements, and it doesn't have to be an ophthalmologist 2020 vision, it can be slip of the retina, I'm just not reading right, or I'm just not um, seeing my world like I should. My brain isn't knowing where I am in space, and space is in relationship to me. So once we get the brain to be able to go, hey, here's where Brian is, now I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not hitting into walls, I'm not tripping over things, or right? I feel more confident and solid. Mm -hmm. So if your child has a stutter, is a little clumsy, I've taken like care, over yep. sensory. Yep, I've helped people with stutters. Uh, Tricks, ticks. Um, I mean, the list is. Uh, <laughs> it's cool. On. So he's going to show us just some of the stuff that he's been doing with um, my son. And actually, we ended up bringing her daughter in because she has motion sickness, and she was able to do a four-hour car ride and even read for an hour without her C-bands and without needing any Ziploc bags at the end of the trip. So that was it's fantastic. That was nice. It's fantastic to see the improvement. Really, really cool. So he again, he's going to kind of show us some of those things. Okay, I didn't move it. It's even running. Is that? I feel like that. All the same. Because that's going to hit your cerebellum. I mean, it's other things, you know, parietal lobe, cerebellum. Where are I? Where are you? How can I see, you know, what is the dysmetria? So there, it does tell you everything. So if the person is, is short, it's hypometric. We can also see that in the eye movements. If they're long, they're hypermetric. So we can see that in eye movements as well. So they usually correlate, and that usually correlates with your cerebellum with accuracy. And then you can also see it's a lot of times you can see it with, um, walking or running, you know, it's just like, it's just not coordinated. Okay. And you go into have to do that and you just see them all over the place. So, and then if you can specifically get, you know, you got to fine tune the, uh, the treatment form, but once you get it and they, they nail it, you can see, usually see it transfer over to eye movements and then also running. It's a lot better. It is more of a treatment, but you can definitely, I mean, if people are generally doing well, it's going to be okay for them. If there's like fresh concussions and stuff, you probably want to have an individual look at before you start doing it. Specific treatments. Mm -hmm. if, if someone sits all day at their desk and they're just like, I want something to kind of challenge myself a little bit and they're halfway decent, this is a decent one to do. Mm -hmm. So, this a lot of times can help. I've seen it help uh, calm down the emotions because it's hitting the midline area. So, it will help with the frontal lobe, <clears throat> which then inhibits the limbic system. And I've seen, I've had people just stop crying. So they'll just sit there and they'll like, you know, I'll test him, I'll do something, and then all of a sudden, you know, they'll bulk an emotional response, and they're just like, they, they, they can't stop crying. It's not like there's anything to cry.
cry over like a death or anything. It's just, I can't stop crying. And you can see the waterworks coming. I'll put them on this, tap them out to whatever hemisphere that I that um, looked at. The faster it goes, more right brain, left uh, deficiency. The slower it goes, a little bit more left brain deficiency. It's not written in stone, but that's the general concept. And I've had people just, within about 20 claps, they're done crying to stop. They're like, yeah, I feel more emotionally solid. I think that would work for a toddler tantrum? Um, a preschool it, tantrum? It, uh, well, it's a little harder to have the toddler. You could, I've had people have their kids sit up there to get a little bit more stability in their spine and stuff. I haven't watched their kid and older kid because their kid is just, you know, six months old and slumping over. So you put them on something like this to kind of wobble them. Of course, your, your hands are near them. And they'll, they'll start to, and then you can do a little spin to get a little vestibular action in there. Um, kind of the, you know, you got to pick the correct direction and stuff. And there's ways to test with infants. I mean, the vast majority of infant examination is all reflexogenic. You all check the reflexes because there's very, very little volitional. I mean, you can't have a, a, a six-month-old go, okay, look here, look here. So you just, you know, grab the keys, grab the pacifier, a uh, lot of, you know, scrape the toe, bring their hand over to see where they can go. So it's a lot more, a lot more reflex, but it could work. But I would love for you to just give parents it's just a quick, like, what can you do to tell if your child does have, like, an imbalance and might need some sort of neurology treatment? Okay, simplistically, we can look at the eyes. The simplest way, so, like, if the muscle testing, a lot of people are familiar with muscle testing. If Arnold Schwarzenegger comes in in his prime, I'm not going to be able to resist his muscles, even if he has an issue. He could probably have a short, sh sore shoulder, and I could mm -hmm. probably, he's still probably going to beat me. So we look at the eye movements, because the eye movements are real simple. If, if I have her look at my thumb and just follow, and we see just nice and smoothness, we know we can take that, that parietal lobe and certain other areas of the brain and brainstem are working pretty well. If you have jerkiness with your eye movements, then we know that there's some what we call psychotic intrusions. Simplistically put, the brain doesn't know where you are. Because every time you have a fast eye movement, you're blind. So you can take your son, your son or your daughter and just have them follow your thumb or a finger and just kind of go up and down. How about far out there? A little bit in the vertical. Oh, but no. if, you, if, if you see a little bit of some jerky eye movements, that is a good representation of an area in your brain called your parietal lobe. That parietal lobe also senses touch, heat, temperature, all that stuff. It's, it's your sensory portion of your brain. The frontal lobe is going to be the motor portion of your brain. So those are some simple things. Again, you can also use the motor aspect of things, see how they are muscle testing. Mm -hmm. Most kids are, you know, parents are going to be stronger than the kids, so we can do that. Um, when we're doing the muscle testing, what you're looking at is from brain standpoint, it's laterally. You're looking at what we call is a, um, a soft pyramidal distribution of weakness versus a contralateral hard pyramidal distribution of weakness from a stroke. So we take that model of increased tone from a soft standpoint from the ipsilateral side of the brain that goes down into your brain stem pontomedular reticular formation, which activates and inhibits the ventral horn cells to the anterior muscles above T6 and posterior muscles below T6. If that inhibition gets altered, now we have increased tone of the flexor muscles, chest muscles, and forearm flexors. And when I come in and I test, just to stay weak, when I come in and test the, ex the extensors, I push and the person shows weakness. Because, from a reflexive standpoint, when these increase their tone, they reflexogenically inhibit the extensors, triceps, wrist extensors, shoulder extensors, in the spinal cord. Just as if I wanted to pick this up and bring it to my eye to look in her, something's got to contract. Reflexogenically in the cord, it 
relaxes or decreases the tone slightly in my triceps to give me extension of the elbow. If I have too much tone, it is reflexogenically inhibiting the posterior muscles of my arm, even if I'm just sitting here. So then when you go to play a sport or do something, now you have a aberrancy or a change in the tone on the elbow joint, shoulder joint, and wrist joint. And that's where you can start getting your tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, and what they call it, I think there was like a maid's elbow or something like that. You can get all kinds of different things because now you don't have the proper tone around the elbow because this is more, this is not only increased in tone, but on top of that, it's reflexogenically inhibiting this. Parents at home can't treat, but is the pushing on the top of the hand a decent idea for parents to do to see if the child is balanced or imbalanced? Yes, yes. The other thing that can, the other thing that it shows is, so if you're, if you're looking here and you're just showing weakness, now she's purposely kind of giving me some weakness to give us, so she's showing weakness here. Okay, the other thing that I also know is that it goes down and it inhibits the intermedial cell column, which is your sympathetic nervous system. So there's a high probability that you could have a higher blood pressure on this side than this side. So you people are thinking, well, I only have one heart, why would I have a blood pressure reading on two sides? You really want to take your blood pressure on both sides. The reason being is because, yes, you only have one heart, but in the spinal cord, you have both sides from T1 to about L1, you have both sides that have um, sympathetic nervous system. And so that sympathetic nervous system is ipsilateral, and that brain in that, in that spinal cord, the mesencephalon will activate it, Pontomedular reticular formation will inhibit it. So again, kind of an on-off or an equal balance of like your muscle tone. That increased sympathetic nervous system will constrict your blood vessels, which then anything knows from a peripheral standpoint, if you ever put your thumb over a garden hose, increases the pressure of the water coming out of the garden hose. You can increase the pressure coming out and you'll have a higher blood pressure on one side versus the other. Wow. The other thing that we can, we, we can back that up with is we can look in the eye it's the only place that we can see veins and arteries. And we'll typically see where a vein and an artery should be one to one because of the constriction, that artery will be constricted to where maybe the vein will look like a two to one or a three to one ratio. I've seen as high as a four to one ratio where that artery is just locked off and um, their blood pressure is a good 10 to 15 or 10 to 14 millimeters of mercury different on one side versus the other. So, and, and, and the blood pressure thing alone is fascinating. There's, there's more than, it, the blood pressure is a symptom. It's not a cause. Mm -hmm. So for me, unless it's like genetic, and even then you probably want to, we could probably do something with it. It's not wise to take all of these blood pressure medication because you could, I've, I've come across numerous people where there was one kid just the other day, 18 years old, in the, medical doctor's office, he was at a 140 over 90. So I looked at his back, he had a mechanical issue with his back, his, his, his uh, uh, low back was straight. So I put him on, on, a, on a lift, and lifted up his heels, which then is going to give a low doses to the low back, which then if, if, the, if the low back is straight, mechanically you cannot pull down the rib, the uh, diaphragm as well. And that mechanical aspect can actually increase blood pressure because you're going to have left a valsalva where if you bear down you increase your blood pressure you decrease your pulse that's a mechanical aspect and then the next phase is you decrease your blood pressure increase your pulse that's a sympathetic that's your autonomics but the first one is mechanical and so if you have a straight back mechanically you can increase your blood pressure so when I had him lift on his heels he went down to a 130 over 77 and then on the next one he went down to 125 and him and his mother like it was it's never been that low so it's mechanical so he shouldn't be any any statins or anything like that or any high blood pressure medication so fast eye movements you can go from thumb to thumb and see how they're doing if they go past your thumb and come back um, that shows that there's some things going wrong. If they take a couple of to get to the thumb, 
the kind of would be like a twitch or a twitch, yeah, itch. jerky in the eye movement. So if you're like, okay, move here, and you see jerk, jerk, jerk to get to the thumb, that says one thing that needs to be corrected. And then if you say, okay, go to this thumb, and you, their eyes go past it and then come back, that lets us gives us indication of another thing. If someone falls or, you know, kids inherently, I mean, the coffee table grabs them, right, or they fall down the stair, uh, off the porch stairs, then what you can do is just a simplistic way is just to see how their thumbs move. And pupil response is another one. They've got blown out pupils, or if they don't react to light, um, those, are, those are also another okay. indicators of, um, of some problems. Always when in doubt, just take them into the ER. Check them out for anything serious. They pass with flying colors, and there's still symptoms, headache, vomiting, or anything like that, but they pass the MRIs, they pass the CT scans, they pass all that stuff, then there's nothing on imaging. Medical doctors are great when it comes to pathology. If, they, if your child is past that, then we're more into the physiology realm of where the physiological functioning of the brain may not be working well. That's my brother. Would it be fair to say that anyone who gets a concussion should have some sort of, sort of therapy to get back to optimal health? Yes, because the brain doesn't heal on its own. It compensates, and there's a difference between compensation and brain healing. And the okay. healing is going to come in with the exercise. It's just like if you, if you busted up your knee, right? The doctor's going to have you go through all the normal protocol, but the other protocol of therapy is physical therapy mm -hmm. so that you can strengthen it. Well, there hasn't been too much, but uh, until a recent, where there's going to be physical therapy for your brain. That's good stuff. Yeah, and we're and it's it's just we're just at the infancy age. We're kind of like the Wright brothers. We just created the plane. Let's see if we can fly it. And so that's that's the excitement of the ne in the neurology world coming around with concussions and brain rehab. It's it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Can you finish out with one tip for parents, just for general brain health? How do we keep, especially our kids' brains, healthy and robust? And just kids who haven't had any concussions, no issues. What's just something we can do day to day to keep their brains mm -hmm. firing well? Um, nutritionally, the greatest thing is EPA DHA for developing children. Um, your, Fish. Part, your brain is fat, mm -hmm. and so. It, it definitely needs that, and that's why it's called essential fatty acids. Mm -hmm. Just like amino acids for bodybuilders, essential amino acids, we don't make it. So therefore we have to have it. So you know, fish oils are great. The, the EPA, DHA in a good ratio is great. Um, exercise wise, just let them, as long as there's no sickness again, these are healthy kids, mm -hmm. let them tumble, let them roll, let them do spins. The more that they can activate and stimulate the vestibular system, the more that they have later in life, and so if something does happen, car accident, whatever, there's more connections and there's more stability in there, that brain can take a hit better. Wow. So the more connections you can create by having them play, not video games, but getting out and playing, mm -hmm. Moving, using their imagination, if they're spinning. playing with their toys, you let them imagine, let them do things, let them roll, let them spin, let them do things. Uh, you see a lot of these playgrounds that they've, they've taken out the merry-go-round, yeah. they've taken out the spinning. Um, I don't know if they still have the swing sets, but you know a lot of that stuff is, is gone. Uh, trampolines, that's a great in the up and down plane, but you still need to get... Whoa, what happened there, right? I know, rookie mistake. I ran out of room on my camera, isn't that goofy? Luckily, we were on the final question, and I just wanted to clarify that Dr. Hanks was talking about letting your kids have a lot of movement. We want their brains and their bodies to be jumping up and down. We want them to be tumbling and doing somersaults and getting that motion and, and changing the way, you know, balance feels. We want them to be doing flips and doing things like spinning on a merry-go-round. Um, he has our kids work on balance boards, which is a little bit less motion, but still important. And, and it's just been so great. I've learned so much from Dr. Hanks 
and working with Gabe on healing his concussion and, and really truly getting rid of our 10 year old's motion sickness. You guys, she did not used to be able to ride in the car for even a two hour trip without feeling nauseous. She's never been able to look down and read. And we've gone on a couple two and four hour trips with no C-bands and no issues. Oh my gosh, glory, hallelujah. And she even read for 45 minutes. I am telling you that is so worth it. It's so awesome. Um, look up Dr. Hanks at drbrianhanks.com. That's Brian with an I. If you're lucky enough to be in the Grand Rapids area, you can go visit him. But if you're not, look up a functional chiropractor in your area. I mean, not, oh, a neurological chiropractor or a functional neurologist and, and see what you can find. But if nothing else, you know, you can take this away that there are practical things that parents can do to build their child's brains and, and basically to build up a resistance to injury that you'll be, you know, your, your brain is less likely to have a, a poor reaction to a concussion or a bump on the head if you're doing some of these things and flipping and jumping and turning and, and connecting your right brain with your left brain and, and playing brain games on the screens if they've gotta be on screens. So thank you again for watching this awesome interview. Again, I'm Katie Kimball from Kids Cook Real Food and we will be back next week with more Tuesday tips and actionable information that parents can use.